Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Reaper blog. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the new things in Reaper 5.1, 5.10, whatever you want to call it. It's the latest version as of today. I'm just going to go through some of the highlights, and if you want all the details, you can look at uh, Jeff's fantastic user guide. I'm just going to blast through these new features as quickly as possible. Okay, starting off in the action list, first one is the apply track effects to items as new take multi-channel action. So that means that if this track here has an effect like recomp, and it is a six channel or however many channels you want, we can render this as a six channel wave instead of just stereo or just mono. Uh, it's a new option. It's not in this list yet. Maybe they'll update that. But uh, if we look in the action list, there's actually a new action. Type in apply and multi. And right here, apply track slash take effects to items, multi-channel output. Let's run that and see what we get. There we go. We've got a six-channel wave file with compression applied. What else was there? A toggle for ripple editing per track and all tracks. Um, before this update, we had set all tracks, set off, set per track, and we had uh, a cycle ripple editing mode. Now, in the latest version, we've got toggles for turning it on and off with one action. So I run this, and you can see it in the main toolbar is toggling. Very, very simple, but nice to have. OK, in the batch converter, they've added support for writing markers and regions. So uh, I have an item here. I've got a marker. I'm going to double click to name it. And I'll just say, like, hello, and make a region, edit the region, and say region. Sure. I'm going to open up the batch converter from the file menu. Going to, uh, I'm going to remove this one and make sure that add selected media items selected. Let's grab that and it's going to put it into the source directory. Um, make sure it's stereo and don't want it mono. So it's just going to use the source name and let's say dash two. So it's a little easier to find. Convert, it'll tell me it's done. And I'll look in the uh, Media Explorer, Project Directory, Let's refresh this, here it is. Drag this in, and you can see we've got a media queue with a note hello and region. So regions are defined with little arrows and the name of the region. So this box here, that's the new thing. In the effects browser, we can insert a single visible effects without first selecting. So that's very similar to the action list. Now we can switch from filter to list via enter in the arrow keys. So if I bring up the effects list, let's just type in EQ. With the arrow keys, I can press up and it goes up to the list. If there is only one item in the list, if you press the Enter key, it will bring that in. It only works when there's one in the list. When you're freezing items, it will automatically remove the silent media from the disk, meaning that silence is not going to take up disk space. With glue, added a new preference to loop glued items. Before when you glued an item, it would loop it by default. I'll just take this item here and I'll go into my options here and type in loop where is it there we go so loop source for imported items that's old loop source for MIDI items that's old loop source for recorded items that's old loop source for glued items that's new so this was basically always on before so if we hit apply and then we glue this item. If I pull this out, it's going to start repeating this item, this original section of the clip. 
So if we undo that, undo this, hit apply, glue it, and now that's the end of the item. And that's, to me, how it should be. Uh, there's a new 8-channel MIDI-controlled synchronized audio looper called Super 8. So this started out as a kind of an experimental thing from uh, Justin. And uh, he decided to add it to Reaper because it seemed to be kind of useful. In the interest of keeping this video moving along, I'm not going to do a demo of Super 8. Maybe I'll do it in the future. I'm not super good with it, but if you're looking for instructions, they're here. Click the edit button on the JS effect and it comes up with all of Justin's notes about uh, how it works. Moving on, keyboard support for buttons F12 to F24. So if you have a huge keyboard with lots of F keys, they will all work now in the action list. MIDI, so there's lots of different MIDI things. Add an option to disable pitch and CC reset on looped playback. Add option and preferences in playback to reset CC pitch on playback start and stop. Make all note off pitch, reset options and preferences in MIDI devices only affect MIDI hardware devices. Add options for hardware reset for play stopped modes. Do not reset pitch at end of items. Chase to pitch of previous items. Option to disable MIDI note on chasing. Remove option to reset CC on playback start. Send only necessary note offs when a track is unrecord armed or unmonitored. And also related is the add option to send note offs or pitch reset messages on start and stop for VSTs. So what this all means is that when you're looping items or you're sending to external hardware, uh, things are just going to work more intuitively. Uh, you're not going to get stuck notes. You're not going to get notes that get cut off too early. Um, you're not going to miss notes that should be sustaining uh, through a loop. Your CC messages are not going to be reset every time you press play or stop. You should have all the options to make it work with VSTs and your external hardware. So for example, the uh, option to reset sustain and pitch turned off is something that really helped with my MeBleep synthesizer uh, because the way that it uses the sustain is actually kind of like a different mode for the oscillator rather than holding down a note. Um, it's kind of like two different lengths of uh, decay times. So um, I need that turned off. You may not want that off depending on your hardware, but uh, it was a nice addition. MP3 and WAV files, they now show the info in source properties. All right, so if I grab something from music library, take this file, drop it in, go to source properties, and I can see the, the MP3 tags are there. And now we may as well get into the Media Explorer options because now there's metadata available in our Media Explorer view. So I'm going to go to a database that I created for a film I was working on. And now we see these additional columns. And on some of these files, I have comments visible. And all this stuff is searchable. So before it was only searchable through the file names. Now we can have comments and, uh, and tags to help with searching, finding things a lot easier. Um, and if we click in any empty area here, we get this option for the search terms. And um, if this is turned off, then searching will be much faster within folders. But with it turned on, we get all this additional functionality, which is great if you have large sample libraries and use a lot of samples, especially for film work and sound design and game audio stuff. Very important stuff. Uh, what else is in the Media Explorer? Column order and visibility. Yeah, so we can now we can hide this stuff, just right click in any of those areas and we can hide, for example, the key and the BPM. Uh, we can rearrange the columns just by clicking and dragging. There is a shortcut list customization. We can click and drag to move the shortcuts around if we want. There's also this sort shortcuts toggle order. 
which uh, it changes the order. I'm not sure what the rules are for how it determines which order it should be, but, but uh, yeah, that's what it does. The other thing is that we can hide this section. We can completely remove that column. If we want to bring it back, we can double click there. It resets it to default. The other thing is that there's new search uh, functionality. So there's more variables for how you search within file names, within the meta, um, searching this but not that, and that sort of thing. Uh, check the user guide for more information on that. OK, in parameter modulation, if I just grab this and this, bring up parameter modulation, go to LFO, there's this new option, free running non-deterministic output. So that means that whether we start or stop, it doesn't affect the position of the LFO, right? And if we have this turned on, I press play, it's going to restart it. So it's always in the same spot depending on the cursor position or the playback position. This is a free running, not linked to the project. Kind of a cool option. OK, so you may have noticed these weird lines on the waveforms. That's the new stretch markers. Uh, they've added an option to make a linear ramp for play rate, which is really, really cool. I'm going to make sure that uh, preserve pitch when changing rate is turned on. And I'm just going to hit play, and, and you guys can hear how it sounds. All right. And now I'll turn off this option, and we'll have a completely different sound. So we can get great sounding tape stop effects and just it opens up a lot of possibilities for sound design. Now if you're just using it for straight straight like drum editing or something like that, the new option for uh, the new view will be really helpful just so you can instantly see what the play rate is if it's faster or slower. If it's faster, then it's, uh, so if I grab this and move it, if it's above the center line, that means it's this rate is faster. If it's below, it means it's slower. The colors also change. And visually, it's a lot easier to see that the item has changed. Now, when we mouse over, we have two different options. So there's a left and right, and there's an up and down. So if we grab that uh, up and down, uh, position, we can change the rate of this point, and it also changes everything afterwards. So it changes the length of that item. There are also a whole bunch of mouse modifiers for this. So media item stretch marker uh, rate is the new one. So it's fairly intuitive, but it's kind of like a, a totally new way of working with stretch markers. Did I miss anything? Add action to manually edit stretch rates. Oh, yeah, so that's uh, command double click. That brings up a box that so we can type in the value that we want. You know, this is going to take a little bit of time to get used to, but this is going to open up a lot of possibilities for sound design. And I know that people are going to be pretty excited about this once they dig into it. And if you only work on music, just that extra visual indicator that the play rate has changed will be welcome. That's all the time I have for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want more details about these features, check out the Reaper user guide from Jeffrey Francis. He does a great job of keeping it updated, and it is another free resource for learning Reaper. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and visit reaperblog.net for more tutorials.